Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Agoracom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. And I think un- important news is an understatement uh, with what Candente Copper came out with recently. Here to talk about is Joanne Fries, present CEO, of the company trades on the TSX big board on the stock symbol DNT. For those who knew the story, and that's going to be some yet because you saw the copper news come out. Bear with me here for about 45 seconds because I've got to give you this intro because there's so much great stuff going on at Candente. First of all, they own a large economic copper deposit in Peru. That's the Canadiaco Norte. It's a 100% owned feasibility stage porphyry copper deposit uh, measuring 7.5 billion pounds measured indicated of copper that can be mined for 22 years once in production. Uh, it's a 10th largest late stage copper resource in the world, sixth highest by grade. Uh, operating costs are about 99 cents per pound, which is which is unbelievable. Capable of generating annual production of 200, these numbers almost un, you, you almost don't believe I'm saying them, 262 million pounds of copper, 39,000 ounces of gold, 911,000 ounces of silver. The Canariaco is so, Norte is so prevalent that it's the subject of four research reports. Uh, one from RFC Ambrian, which says uh, in the top 10 projects with potential involved third party MA, that came out in December. Haywood said it's one of 18 assets selected as likely to be considered by majors looking to acquire. That came out in December. Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, all kind of saying the same thing. And the third party validation from a major investor, Fortescue Metals Group uh, holds 19.9% of Candente. And today's press release, Candente has disclosed an inferred mineral resource on their second project. This is an addition to Norte in the area. This is the Canariaco Sur uh, with 2.2 billion pounds of copper, 1.2 million ounces of gold. Joanne, forgive my long intro, but that's how much you have going on. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, George. Um, you know, before we get before we get into some of the details about this, um, let's talk about the implications of all the numbers in that news release, so that resource and especially copper investors out there, you know, get a really good indication of how big this is and what this really means. Absolutely. So, um, first of all, Kenyaco Sur. We have never done a resource calculation there before. We weren't sure our 15 holes would, would meet a resource level. We did that work during the PEA because um, we wanted to know now um, exactly where we're at with that project. Now, we've only drilled off what we think is approximately half of it, maybe. Oh. And, um, and so this is an, an initial, and it's inferred. So inferred means your, your drill holes are more widely spaced than if it was measured or indicated. Um, the low, lowest level of confidence, but still, it is a resource. And um, so already we've got, using a 0.15 cutoff, 2.2 billion pounds of copper and um, and 1.18 million ounces of gold and some silver, 15 million ounces. So that's a pretty play, good, nice place to start. Tell us, um, sometimes for us who are less geologically inclined, how happy are, are you and the team at Candente uh with with this with these results very happy we were not expecting to have already another million ounces of gold because Kenyaco norte has two million ounces of gold and in the measured and indicated category seven and a half billion pounds of copper but it also has inferred another couple of billion pounds of copper um, and that's using a higher cutoff than the 0.15 the 0.15 is is new that we're using that um, very publicly because now it's based on 350 copper. When resources were calculated for us the last time, which was 2010, they were using 250 copper. And, and now, of course, 350 copper being the base case, and the engineers have, during the PEA, figured that that's the break even. So 0.15 would be the cutoff of what's economic to mine. Doesn't mean but, but, production at at the 0.15 cutoff, but those resources have a good good opportunity chance that they'll get mined. And, and let's not forget that copper right now generally sitting in the 440 area, 
and Goldman Sachs has a price target of $5 and 40, 50 cents in the next 12 months. So you, you're probably under, right? You're, you're under promising here. So you can potentially over overperform in the future. Yeah, exactly. And the nice thing is that with this update using a 0.15 cutoff on Norte and a, and a new resource calculation, it's actually got 9.29 billion pounds of copper in measured and indicated and, and 2 million ounces of gold in, in, in the measured and indicated. But then again, we have an inferred category, which is another 2.66 billion pounds of copper and another half million ounces of gold. So that this is stacking up to be some pretty nice resources for a junior company to be owning 100%. Yeah, I, 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 I say these numbers and I can't even believe even the numbers as you're saying them. And by the way, I did some math. So maybe you can help me out here. I combined the two and I did some math and I came up with 14 billion pounds of copper, 3.9 million ounces of gold, 92 million ounces of silver. Uh, so obviously there's a, tell us why I've got that discrepancy. So people at home can understand that. Well, you're allowed to add these up. I 43101 rules, I'm not allowed to add up measured and indicated ah. with inferred, which is why I said measured and indicated is 9.2, and then the inferred on copper anyway um, is 2.66 on Norte alone. In gold, the measured and indicated is 2.14, and the inferred is 0.55. And then again, Kenya Akusur is a whole nother deposit. Now it is within the same project. And, and if you don't mind, I need to correct a couple of things that were said in the intro. So it is the same sure. project, Kenuriaco. It's with the, all the same, um, con well, it's different concessions, but they're all attached, if you know what I mean. So physically, four to five kilometer trend with what we call three porphyry centers. Um, Kenuriaco Norte and Kenuriaco Sur are actually more or less two kilometers apart if you, if you go from their center to center. Um, the other thing that you commented was that we're at feasibility level, and that's really kind of a holdover from when we were in pre-feasibility early on. So I can no longer say by 43101 that we're in feasibility or the feasibility level because we're just we're just doing a new PEA. But anyway, okay, okay, so good, you know, just clarifying a few things. Well, that's why we've got you on. <laughs> that's why people want to hear from you. Uh, I, I, I'll get 98% of it right, but we, we, rely, we rely on you for the rest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, so how does this new source of potential metal impact overall economics for, for the project development, either leading to production or sale? Because both of those are, you know, are, are, possi are real possibilities now. Well, the first thing I would say is that it's, it's re again, it's really nice to see all of a sudden we've got some significant gold. Um, you know, the gold, is in the gold increases pretty quickly when your grades change, and, and we always knew Sewer had higher grades of gold, but nice to see it hanging together. Um, bigger companies, you know, if, if, if you only looked at 7.5 billion pounds of copper and I measured and indicated and figured that was all that would ever be economic, and that's all this project was, was where it was going to go, I'm not saying that's small, but there's a lot more companies that'll be interested in acquiring something where there's many more billion billion pounds of copper and we haven't finished yet, right? Exploring. So we know there's more to come. We we obviously can't can't project exactly how much. Now when you talk about getting into production, well, one is the economics of, of, of your ore body. So that's where we do look at where we had a 0.52 copper equivalent. Um, as opposed to the measured and indicated, which measured um, here is 0.48 copper equivalent. Nothing wrong with that, but we have slightly higher um, for a starter. And then actually for a starter, I think we're almost a 0.58, but I'm waiting for the new mine plan to be, um, you know, those details come out in the PEA. Um, and then, you know, what the PEA we're working on is, is to get a lower capex. And that's not to say that then again, some of the numbers you reiterated are from the work we did in 2011. Uh, bigger project, 95,000 tons per day. We're looking now at more, pro probably 40,000 tons per day startup and ramping up into 80, which would give us a smaller capex. So you can get started probably faster because it's a smaller start, but also easier to finance. You don't try and eat the whole elephant at once. Exactly. Now, 
Having said that, Fortescue and other companies like Fortescue may very well prefer to get started on a project like this with 95,000 tons per day or even slightly higher because I know at one point we looked at 110,000 tons per day. Um, you know, and they're welcome to do that if they buy it from us for the right price. <laughs> but, but we wanted to find out if we could get started smaller and have more optionality for financing into production ourselves or more, you know, medium-sized companies. And, and so there's lots of options. What are next steps from here? So you've got a little bit of work ahead of you until you really know what you've got here. If you don't mind, talk to everyone about next steps and ballpark timelines. We're not going to hold you to specific dates, but just to give everyone at, at home an indication of how far out you are from having, you know, enough great information on hand to make your decision as to which way you want to go. Right. The next thing would be feasibility. Now we've done a lot of engineering studies and we've changed things up a bit in the PEA. And, and when I say that, doesn't mean there was anything wrong with the old studies. Some things had to be updated. Some things we changed for an enhanced uh, ESG, environmental, social, and, and governance um, aspects. And um, so we've, we've improved or enhanced a lot of aspects of the project and um, move it forward that way. Ballpark ETAs? Well, feasibility, once we launch into it, takes about a year. Now, I think because of all the engineering we've done, lots of geotech, lots of metallurgical um, background stuff, we'll still do a little more of that. But I would think about another six months for the engineering aspect of the feasibility. Having said that, EIA always takes at least a year because you need both seasons. Um, I have to ask, and I'm not sure if you can answer, but I would have to think you're at the point where you're getting phone calls. I don't know if it's from majors or mini or, 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 or mediums, but uh, obviously, let me ask it this way. Are there any NDAs or, or, or majors whose names you can't discuss, uh, but are probably interested? Like, is, is the phone ringing? Is there, is there a significant level of interest from, from majors out there now? Or, or what can you disclose? Yeah, absolutely. That's that is the question. An NDA within it says it's confidential, and you can't disclose <laughs> that you have an NDA with with whoever you have it with, right? Um, but of course, we have NDAs and and lots of people interested in this project and our company and such. So um, it's it's not a quiet time, that's for sure. And I might actually ask if I can um, show a slide from a comparison that shows a, some research. Yeah, um, certainly was a comparison on us. Um, so here you can see how we compare. Now this is without the updated resource, but you can see we're sitting right here with Kanyaraco Norte and they use 8.9 billion pounds. And, and by the way, what is this that we're looking at first? So it says bubble size represents contained copper. So this is kind of putting it relative against other products around the world, right? Exactly. And on okay. the left hand side is, is um, what would be measured and indicated tonnage. And then on the right-hand side is grade. So you do have several projects with much higher grade, but much smaller. Sure. But we're stacking up, as you can see, very nicely on grade and tonnage. And these groups, both Haywood and Ambrian, have commented that of the most advanced projects in the world right now, we're in the 10th largest and sixth highest for grade. So, and that's without our, without touching, can, you know, Kenya Reactive Sewer coming into the equation or the new cutoff. Yeah, nothing better than a graphic like that to kind of, uh, uh, hence why a picture is worth a thousand words. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of other great projects here, right? Hud Bay with Rosemont, uh, Hot Chilies, pretty get, getting pretty well known here. Tech uh, Zafranel project, Copper Mountain, that's a fabulous producer. Um, and yeah, several others. So, but we're sitting pretty, quite pretty already. And now we're adding, adding more, more copper and gold to that story. Yeah, I was gonna say, Joanne, fair to say that as using your words, you're sitting quite pretty, um, but you've still got a, a lot more work ahead of you. Like the, there's still a lot more to come here. There is, although having said that, you know, I, we're getting pretty anxious to just start moving Kenyariaco Norte ahead 
and not keep waiting for drilling off more at Sewer and Verde, um, depending upon how long the permits take. But, you know, if we could drill there tomorrow, we would. But if we, w given that we can't, we still have to get new permits. Let's move Norte ahead as, f as fast as we can. So we actually have a two-pronged approach. Um, it's one project, it's the Kanyuraco project, but within it, Kanyuraco Norte, we can move into feasibility and start working with uh, Sanase, the environmental agency in Peru, on a feasibility, a full feasibility for uh, an operation. And then on the other hand, we're starting, um, we finished a year of EIA on, um, for drilling permits for Kanyuraco Sewer and Quebrada Verde and move ahead with um, the, the agencies that handle that, those EIAs to um, keep, just not stop here. Uh, and and, and if I'm pronouncing it wrong, let me know, but uh, Quebrada Verde, that's the third jewel in the crown, right? That's correct. No drill holes in it, but the same geochem, geophysics, and definitely copper mineralization in the creeks that is typical of porphyries. When so, do you expect to be drilling that? Gosh, you know, it's gonna be about a year, unfortunately, um, by all the permit, way permit is going in Peru. That's my prediction anyway. But it's not like you don't have a whole lot going on in the meantime. No, exactly. And we're not we're not going to wait for it anymore. We're just going to march ahead with Norte. Joanne, what's next? I know we've talked about next steps. When do you think we're going to have you back next? When should chair when what's the next kind of uh, what ballpark? When do you expect the next update to be well, the next yeah, item up for discussion? Once we get the PEA completed and out and it, and, we, and I do think that's fairly imminent. I, I was quoted yesterday by saying, sometimes I think it's imminent, and then I think I realize it's not so imminent. But anyway, it's getting very, very close. Um, get that out. That'll be more news, because then we we'll, we'll can talk about new CapEx, new NPVs, IRRs, and just the whole, whole new scenario. Um, and then marching ahead into feasibility. And of course, the copper world just growing and growing, because the number of people that care about copper and realize how much copper is needed not just for all the EV vehicles and the charging stations and and the new world of electric vehicles in um, not just cars driving around the streets but mining mining trucks and everything um, add to that the infrastructure that needs to be replaced in the United States and and other um, yep. countries of Europe um, so you know on the one hand you have those who want one refrigerator one computer one cell phone for the first time and then you have all the people that need all those things, all those infrastructure aspects re rebuilt. Would it be an overstatement if I said, and given given the amount of time condensed copper has been around, would it be an overstatement if I said that today you're sitting, the company's sitting in the best position it's ever been in, even though it had a much higher market cap 10 years ago, yeah. um, from a pure business fundamentals point of view, is it safe to say that it's in the best position it's ever been in right now? Yeah, as, as much as I hate to say, you know, we didn't get it sold, you know, when, when in, the, in the last cycle, this is an amazing cycle to be in. So we're very, very happy to be where we are right now. Yeah. Well, Joanne, that, uh, that smile and that little laugh there says it all, and it's well-deserved. You and your team have done uh, wonderful things uh, on Canadiaco. We can't wait to see what else you have in store for us over the next imminent you know, even it will we'll, we'll define that. And then over the next six months and 12 months, uh, when you get to the decision as to do you go production, do you go for sale, but at least you're, you're in the driver's seat. And, uh, and on behalf of all shareholders, I say, congratulations on this milestone and can't wait for the next one. Thanks very much, George. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by spot by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, or your favorite podcast platform to Joanne Freeze. She's present CEO of Candente Copper, trades on the big board TSX on the stock symbol DNT. For those who are new to the story, uh, there are a lot of original, I call them OG investors who have been with Candente for quite a while, but there are also a lot of new investors who are learning about copper, understanding that this next cycle, what, what, it, what it holds, and you're discovering new companies. Look, I read off to you what just some of the four research reports say. We talked about the numbers. Now's your time to do your due diligence. Two ways to do that. Get to the company's profile page on Agoracom, where we give you a good thousand foot overview of the company so you can start to absorb what it's doing. And then when you're ready for your deep dive due diligence, uh, head right over from Agoracom, right over to the Condente website and do all your, dupe, your, your deep dive due diligence. 
Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, the video's over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our YouTube channel so you never miss another great Agoracom small cap video.